What's up guys? Welcome to the Living Las Vegas channel where we talk about all things Las Vegas. Today we're going to do a little comparison of the northwest part of Las Vegas and the southwest part of Las Vegas. So I chose these neighborhoods because a lot of people that aren't familiar with Las Vegas, particularly outside of the Strip, um, say when they come here they hear about Henderson and they hear about Summerlin. But they think maybe that those are the only two neighborhoods. And by the way, those are phenomenal neighborhoods. Those are some of my favorite parts of the city. However, it's not always for everybody. And a lot of times what I'll end up doing is if I show somebody some areas, maybe outside of those areas, they end up falling in love with either the southwest part of Las Vegas or the northwest part of Las Vegas. So what this video is going to entail is I'm going to break down in about eight different categories, um, comparisons of the southwest and the northwest. And at the end of the video, if you stick around, I'll reveal to you which one I prefer over the two, although it's really close. All right, let's get to the video. If this is your first time on the channel and you want to know about all things Las Vegas, be sure to hit that little bell and subscribe to the channel and you'll be the first to know what's going on in the Las Vegas market. My name is Adam Hockenberry and myself and my team get calls, texts, and emails literally on the daily of people that are looking to make a move to the Las Vegas area. Now, if that's you, you're looking to make a move out here, whether it's a week from now, a month from now, even if it's a year from now, feel free to reach out. My information's in the description. I'd be happy to help you make a smooth move to the Las Vegas area. All right, let's get to the video. So the main purpose of me putting this video together was uh, basically, I, I think a lot of people, like I said, think of Summerlin, they think of Henderson, they think of the Strip, they might even think of Fremont Street. But a lot of people don't know that there is two massive parts of the city that are also phenomenal places to live, depending on what you're into and what you're looking for when you're moving to Las Vegas. There are a lot of people that are moving to Las Vegas because uh, they maybe do want to live that single, ready to mingle life and get crazy. Um, my wife and I definitely enjoyed that the first year or two we were out here before we started having kids. Um, and then there's also people who want to have a little bit more of a relaxed environment and whatnot. So I'm going to get into the Northwest and Southwest. Now these are covering humongous areas. So I'll kind of break that down. I'll give you some examples of certain neighborhoods and I probably have a video um, on those neighborhoods. In fact, I would say I guaranteed have a video of those sub neighborhoods if you want to check out any of my other videos to see exactly what those neighborhoods within the Northwest or Southwest entail. So you can put them against uh, maybe like anything you've seen in Summerlin or Henderson or if you're looking downtown or somewhere else in the city. Uh, without further ado though, let's get to the categories of me breaking down these both side by side in comparison. So the first category I wanna break down is the actual location. So we have the Southwest part is exactly what it sounds like. You basically take the 15 freeway, which divides the Southwest, and then you are west of that, and then you're probably south, right around south of Sahara, south of Desert Inn. Some people have different uh, determinations on, I would say south of Desert Inn to me is more uh, Southwest. Um, basically encompasses Enterprise and um, Spring Valley are pretty much like your main large encompassing neighborhoods. Um, you're gonna have certain areas like Mountain's Edge, which is the far southwest corner. If you're going really almost directly south of Las Vegas, just slightly west you're in. Southern Highlands, just above that, you got kind of that Enterprise Blue Diamond area. That's where you're gonna see more of the larger lots. Um, and then, you know, there's a whole bunch. You got the older part of Spring Valley where you're gonna see more houses built in the 60s, 70s, 80s, um, pretty much up through DI and probably really east of like Buffalo Rainbow area. So that's pretty much what's gonna encompass the Southwest. Um, I would say the Southwest, certain parts of the Southwest is gonna be older, but then there's a lot of parts in the outskirts of the Southwest that's actually gonna be newer. You got a population of over a half a million people. So you're gonna get a little bit more of a hustle and bustle uh, atmosphere in the Southwest. Now, when I take the Northwest and I think of like, some people will categorize it west of only the 95. I actually go a little bit east of the 95 to like say Decatur and 215 exit and kind of over um, and, and to the west and just west of the 95. When I think of um, the Northwest, like Centennial Hills, you're gonna have areas like that. Lone Mountain Estates, Cliff Shadows, Sky Canyon, Providence, Sky Hills, now Sunstone, which is a brand new development, even further out, closer off Kyle Canyon Road. 
Desert Shores, El Capitan Ranch. So there's going to be a whole bunch of neighborhoods. Um, I would say there's more sub neighborhoods in Southwest because you're only looking at about a quarter of a million people in the Northwest. I would say Northwest, you're going to get a bit more of a chill vibe, definitely going to be more laid back. Um, and then with the Southwest, you're going to have a little bit more hustle bustle city, like I said before. So that as far as the location goes, that is, is pretty much uh, how I would break those down and, and the differences between the two. All right, that's number one. Okay, number two is going to be traffic. So when I look at, um, and I'm going to kind of uh, basically curtail off of, of location because I forgot to mention this. Um, so your proximity to the strip from the southwest, depending on what part of the, of the southwest you're from, is going to be much closer on a distance standpoint, but your traffic is usually going to be a little bit worse, particularly when you get on the 215. Um, heading and, and trying to catch the 15 up. So like, I kind of live near what they call the bend, which is Sunset, Durango, uh, and 215, like right on the edge, just below Summerlin. So when I come around, it's I, once I hit that 15, usually that's where the, the traffic can kind of clog up a little bit. You got more people living in the Southwest, so it does tend to have more traffic. Uh, but still, the strip is probably 17, 18 minutes away. The airport's only about 15 minutes away. So as far as uh, proximity to the strip and the major stuff in the center of the city, especially the strip and the airport, probably give the edge to the southwest. Now, as far as the northwest, there's a couple different ways you can go. You're probably about, depending on where you're at, you're about 30, 25 to 30 minutes from the strip in the airport because you're either going to come if you are let's say in Cliff Shadows or Lone Mountain and you're close to the 215, you might take. Uh, the 215 all the way depending on what your Google app or your Waze app says uh, traffic wise but you also could take Summerlin Parkway to the 95 to the 15 depending on how that what they call the spaghetti bowl is, is situated that can also get a little bit jammed up now if you like downtown Fremont Street uh, downtown Fremont Street is probably gonna be a little closer to the Northwest a little bit better proximity a little bit easier to get there than from the Southwest and where that's located but overall i would say if you're kind of within neighborhoods like let's say i gotta go just two three exits down the 215 and i live in the northwest versus the southwest i'm definitely giving a traffic edge to the northwest big time there's really hardly any traffic in the northwest um once you get up to like lake mead just above summerland parkway there's not much traffic so if i live on let's say off cheyenne and 215 and cliff shadows and i need to get to sky canyon it's a seven minute drive because I won't hit any traffic unless there's like a major accident. Whereas like I live off Sunset in 215 in the Southwest, let's say I needed to get to, I don't know, Rainbow or Jones or something like that. I have a much higher likelihood of catching some traffic. Just go and say three, four exits in the Southwest on the 215. Um, and also on the streets, I would say you have a little bit more high likelihood of getting jammed up on the streets in the Southwest. So for traffic, I'm gonna give the edge to the Northwest. All right, it's number two. All right, what you guys are all waiting for, home prices. So a lot, like I said before, a lot of the reason why people maybe are looking, they have these ideas of say Summerlin or Henderson, they think they're gonna get this huge yard and be on a budget. Maybe they heard a lot of stories about 15 years ago when we were pretty much ground zero for the crash and you had, you know, you could buy a house in the nicest neighborhood in Las Vegas for 300 grand. Well, that's no longer the case. And most of the newer construction, a lot of the building that's happened has built the lots smaller and smaller in Summerlin and Henderson. So a lot of times in the Southwest and Northwest, you're gonna get a lot more bang for your buck and you're gonna be really be just as close to the action. And you're gonna be close to all the great things that Summerlin and Henderson have to offer, especially Summerlin if you're in the Northwest or Southwest. So when it comes to home prices, as far as bang for your buck, it, it's pretty close, but you get a little bit more for your money in the Northwest. Uh, the Northwest can have a little bit cheaper prices. Now, the less expensive home you get or the newer home you get, if it's not a super high priced home, you are probably going to sacrifice some yard and that is absolutely the, the case in the Southwest as well. Now, there are areas in the Southwest and in the Northwest where you have large lots, especially in my opinion, I'm gonna give the edge to the Northwest on large lots of land. So a lot more, there are horse property, in Enterprise, kind of around like that, right by the Silverton Casino, um, like just uh, south of Blue Diamond, and um, a little bit like, I would say like east of Jones, you're gonna be able to get a little bit more um, of those horse properties where they're half acre, acre, two acres, you know, all that kind of stuff. There's actually an amazing little place called McKee Ranch 
that's like a really cool nonprofit. You can go there like during uh, the, the fall, you can go there and pick out a pumpkin and feed the horses and the animals. It's really cool. It's like two and a half acres of land. Um, so it, that's actually one thing in the Southwest, but as far as the Northwest, if you're looking for more land, to me, there's a lot more good properties at, at a little bit more reasonable price in the Northwest, like in the Centennial Hills area. Um, and as far as even like, if you go just east of the 95 in a little area called Bradley Ranch, like off Decatur, there's a ton of horse property up there as well. So if like you want to find something like with maybe you want to have, you had a couple horses and you want to move out here, you want RV parking. Don't get me wrong, you can find it in the Southwest, but I'm definitely giving the Northwest the, the advantage as far as RV parking, larger lots and whatnot. Now, some of the downfalls of that though, with these larger lots, a lot of them are on septic and well. So now some people love that. They don't really want to be tied into the city, but I'm telling you right now in the, in the interest of water conservation, Las Vegas is making it a little bit more difficult for people on septic that are not on public sewer and they want them on city water. And pretty much if you want to get any modifications to your house, you want to make it build an addition out or anything like that, you're not going to get it approved. Um, and that's really anywhere in Las Vegas. That's both the Southwest and the Northwest. Um, it's going to be very difficult if, if you're, if at all, that you're going to be able to get approved any kind of building or anything like that because uh, if you have septic or well. So that's something to know about if you're looking for larger lots. If it is a septic property, you're gonna wanna learn uh, and look into how much it's gonna be to connect sewer and water. And let me tell you, it's not cheap. There are public funds available, but it's definitely something to think about uh, before you make that. Sorry, that's a little side note. I didn't actually plan on throwing that in the video, but if you are looking for big land and you are uh, on this video, then, then that's definitely something you wanna know if, if land is, is important to you. But yeah, as far as home prices, I give the edge to the Northwest as far as more bang for your buck, but um, uh, both are, are pretty reasonable. All right, so number three. Okay, number four is gonna be home styles, and I, I'm gonna kind of tie in the lot size here. Um, again, you're gonna get a lot more uh, larger lots, I would say, in the Northwest as far as half acre acre lots. However, with newer construction, there are a few builders. There's, I think there's more building going on with half acre lots in the Northwest, just because there's a little bit more land available there right now. Um, however, in the Southwest, there are still, there's still building going on, but I would say as far as your everyday lots, let's say you're at a five or $600,000 budget, and you're looking more in the outskirts of the Northwest, or you're willing to have an older house, maybe built in the 60s, 70s, or 80s, like in Spring Valley, you actually might get a little bit bigger um, yard on average. And when I say that, I'm talking maybe a quarter acre or a little bit less. Um, but the, believe it or not, a quarter acre is actually a pretty big lot in the Las Vegas area. And as far as home styles, if like character and um, maybe non-cookie cutter is your thing, I'm definitely gonna point you to Spring Valley. You're definitely gonna have more homes that are going to be less cookie cutter, I guess you could say. They're gonna be more, you know, those 60s, 70s built houses um, that are a little more classic looking versus kind of the house that looks the same. To me, the Northwest is gonna be more cookie cutter and then the outskirts of the Southwest is definitely gonna be more cookie cutter. So that's something you're aiming for to have like kind of an original house. Maybe you're moving from California or like, like I did and the houses in my neighborhood were all built in like the 40s and 50s and they all had just tons of character and classic look and no house looked the same, then you're gonna want Spring Valley, definitely. Um, and then as far as HOAs, uh, both are somewhat, I would say, even Steven on HOAs. Um, if I would say the Southwest is gonna have more HOAs in the newer developments in the, in the uh, outskirts. And really that would, I would, that would say like west of like Rainbow probably, maybe west of Buffalo. Um, whereas the Northwest, you're gonna have, I would say sprinkled throughout, you're probably gonna have more non-HOA neighborhoods if that's important to you. Um, but just remember with HOAs, they are a pain. I don't like people telling me I have three weeds or you, you, know, you can't park your car on the street or any of the annoying stuff that they do. However, I have seen houses where like I, I showed a house in the, in the Northwest uh, a, few, a couple months ago. This dude had like 30 cars. He was running an auto mechanic shop and no one could say anything because there was no rules against it. So some things to think about there too. But uh, when it comes to home styles and uh, just overall, uh, I would say if you're looking for originality and not as cookie cutter, I would give the advantage to the Southwest on that.
All right, lifestyle is gonna be number five topic I'm gonna talk about. So it, it's pretty simple on this one. If you want more laid back, more chill, the Northwest is, is probably where I would go. You got a lot of cool stuff to do. You got a lot of hiking close by. Um, you're not that far from Red Rock. You might be a little closer to Red Rock National Park in the Southwest, but you're not far at all in the Northwest. You got Lone Mountain, which is one of my favorite hikes because you can literally get up and down uh, probably in like 45 minutes to an hour, maybe an hour and a half if you're a little bit more of a beginner type hiker. And then you're only about 25 to 30 minutes from Mount Charleston. There's tons of hikes up there. Not to mention, we've had like a record-breaking summer of heat. So <laughs> 110 degrees uh, down here, it's probably like 80, 85 degrees up in Mount Charleston. So if you want to get a little break from the heat, you are a lot closer with the Northwest. Now, as far as the Southwest, there's a lot of perks in the Southwest. It's a little more hustle bustle. I think you you have a lot more stuff closer to you as far as shopping and just proximity to the strip, proximity to the center of the city, closer to the airport. Uh, if you go to California a lot, like I moved from Los Angeles and my, my mom and sister still live in Orange County. So for me to hop on the 15 is definitely better than when I used to live in the Northwest. That probably added an extra 15, 20 minutes, probably 20 minutes at least to my drive. Whereas this shaves off a good 20 minutes and hey, when you're driving four hours with two kids in the car, every minute counts, uh, at least for me it does anyways. So as far as lifestyle, if you're looking for more kind of a little bit more urban city life, I would definitely recommend the Southwest. If you are looking for more um, uh, chill, laid back, don't wanna be near the city in the action, then I would definitely recommend the Northwest. All right, it's number five. All right, parks and recreation is gonna be my number six topic. So as far as parks go, Overall, the amount of parks, I'm probably gonna give the advantage of the Southwest. I think there is more parks. Your proximity to Summerlin is a little bit closer, which has a ton of awesome parks. But make no mistake, there's some really cool stuff to do in the Northwest. I already said McKee Ranch, um, kind of by like Blue Diamond and Dean Martin, just a little south of Blue Diamond there, by the Silverton Casino. Um, and then there's just tons of great parks. Like Exploration Peak is a phenomenal park in Mountain's Edge. It's like a kind of an old Western town theme park. Um, there's a Cougar Creek, which is a great little splash pad off Rainbow. Um, great, great little spot there. And then as you get, you know, closer, you got Cowabunga Canyon, which is the sweet water park. So when it is a thousand degrees out here, um, every little bit helps as, as far as water and, and trying to stay cool. If you don't want to just go to a pool every day, you can do that. So there's a lot of great recreation. I would say as far as the amount of parks, I think that Southwest has a little bit of an advantage, but make no mistake, there's some phenomenal parks in the Northwest, like Cliff Shadows Park has a great park and a great splash pad. Lone Mountain Estates, um, right in that area, right by Lone Mountain has a really cool park. And I used to take my daughter there when we lived Northwest all the time to the little equestrian park. They have a little equestrian uh, park there where people ride their horses. So that's really cool. Um, and you know, Centennial Park is awesome. And if you're in the Sky Canyon, Providence area, there's tons of little mini parks, like Knickerbocker Park is awesome um, in Providence. And uh, as far as Sky Canyon, there's like a whole bunch of little mini parks. And then you have Sky Center, which is amazing there. So, um, and like I said before, your proximity to Mount Charleston, if you wanna go, if you ski, go into Lee Canyon, you're gonna be closer in the Northwest. Um, so for recreation, it really just depends on what you're into. If you want to be a little closer to shopping and uh, the city uh, and like maybe more little parks that you're going to take like your kids to or walking trails, I'm going to give the advantage to the Southwest on that. But if you're more into hiking, getting outdoors, closer proximity to Mount Charleston, then I'm definitely going to give the advantage to the Northwest. Plus you have Floyd Lamb Park and Gilcrease Orchard. Uh, I forgot to mention those in the Northwest. Uh, Gilcrease Orchard has like the best apple cider donuts ever really cool place to take your kids uh like if you have them or if you just want to go grab a pumpkin um you can grab a pumpkin in the fall and you can pick you know uh veggies and stuff like that so pretty cool little spot uh, but yep yeah, that's number six all right dining and entertainment is number seven and i gotta be honest the southwest wins this one in my opinion on a by a landslide so uh, I was gonna do a separate one, uh, coffee, because um, I love coffee. And the Southwest, I gotta say, is gonna win that one by a landslide too. So if, now there are good restaurants in the Northwest. Don't you know? hear what I'm not saying. There are some good spots to eat in the Northwest. Uh, if you're in the Desert Shores area, a couple of my favorite spots in all of Las Vegas are Marche Bacuse 
and Americana. Uh, both are absolutely phenomenal restaurants. They're gonna be on your like more higher end. You're not gonna get as many high-end uh, restaurants, uh, but you are gonna get a couple. Um, and there's, a, like I said, there's a few good restaurants, but comparing that to the Southwest, to me, it's it's not even close. Uh, the Uncommons and Durango Casino alone probably blow everything away in uh, the Northwest as far as dining. And as far as if you wanna go out and grab some drinks, get a cup of coffee, have a little bit more innovative food. Uh, to me, it's it's not even close, really. Um, yeah, I, I wanted to elaborate a little bit more, but as far as that goes, don't get me wrong, there are good restaurants in the Northwest. If you look them up, you know, like I gave you a couple, there's a great baby stacks on Buffalo and Lake Mead, which is one of my favorite breakfast spots. They have one in the Southwest as well. Um, if you want a good coffee shop in the Northwest, you got Aware Coffee. Um, but in the Southwest, you also have Aware Coffee, you have Caffeine Machine, you have Alchemy Coffee, you have Founders Coffee, you have Roma Coffee. Um, I, I mean, there's so many good spots in the Southwest area as it gets right up against Summerlin. And also too, in the Southwest, your proximity to downtown Summerlin or maybe even to Tivoli Village. Uh, it depends on where you're at in the Northwest, it could be a wash. Um, but you're gonna have just more access, in my opinion, to more dining, not to mention you're closer to the Strip. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to give the advantage to the Southwest as far as dining goes. All right, weather. Um, if you don't like heat, well, then I don't know what you're doing thinking about going to Las Vegas because it gets hot here in the summer. Um, and, but I'll tell you what, what I was more surprised when I moved from Los Angeles, what threw me off more than anything was the winter time. I actually got pretty cold here. Um, so if you're in the Southwest or Northwest, to me, I lived in both. I lived in the Northwest for six years. I lived in the Southwest for two years. Um, I moved to the Southwest because I did kind of want to get out of the Northwest at that time because I, a lot of my life was closer in the Southwest. It wasn't that I didn't like the Northwest. It's just a lot, uh, there was a lot more bringing me to the Southwest. Now, as far as weather goes, um, if you are up the mountain, it's going to be just a touch cool, whether you're in Cliff Shadows, Lone Mountain Estates, or even kind of Western uh, Southwest, it's going to be a little bit. Now, if you're in the older part of Spring Valley or Desert Shores, it's going to be a little bit hotter. So both really apply, but where I saw the big difference is wind. To me, the Northwest is so much more windy than the Southwest. Now, if you don't know this, I lived in Chicago before I lived in LA. Um, they call that the Windy City. I actually think the wind at times can be just as bad here. We actually get a lot more wind in the Las Vegas Valley than people think. And to me, the wind is way worse in the Northwest than it is in the Southwest. To me, weather-wise, I'm definitely giving the edge to the Southwest. All right, that's gonna complete the list. Okay, so that's gonna complete the list of those eight categories. Obviously, I could elaborate. If you guys feel like I missed a category, I could have touched on something in comparing the Southwest and the Northwest, or I missed any details, you can feel free to give me some feedback. Let's just make it nice. We don't need to be mean about it. I'm a human being like any of you guys. So if I miss something, you want to call it out in a comment, brilliant. That would be awesome. Um, now, what I wanted to reveal is out of the two, if I was going to live and I had, like budget was no concern, I was going to pick this. I Let's say I work from home and I had a choice between the Southwest and the Northwest by a slim margin, I would probably take the Southwest. I do love living in the Southwest, but I do miss the Northwest. I'd still sell a ton of real estate in the Northwest um, of Las Vegas, and I'm up there all the time. But as far as living day to day, I do like the dining options. I do like um, a little bit less wind, and uh, honestly, just the proximity to kind of where my life is at, where my office is, um, family and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it just works for me better in the Southwest. However, it is a slim margin. I love them both. You, in my opinion, can't go wrong either way. And if you guys have any further questions or comments, please feel free uh, to shoot me a message, comment, you can contact me. And if this is your first time on the channel um, and you wanna know about all things Las Vegas, hit that little bell and subscribe to the channel and you can be the first to know what's going on in the Las Vegas market. Again, my name is Adam Hockenberry. Myself and my team, we literally get calls, texts, and emails on the daily of people that are looking to make a move to the Las Vegas area. If that's you, you're looking to make a move here or maybe even out of here, whether it's a week from now, a month from now, even if it's a year from now, feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to help you make a smooth move to the Las Vegas area. All right, guys, I hope this was much fun for you guys, and I hope it was helpful for you guys as it was much fun for me to make this video. We'll see you on the next one.